he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.
Well, well, good morning. I hope this is working and on. Good to see you guys wherever you're joining us from, uh, whether it's at home in your lounge or here in the building. You can applaud. You're not allowed to shout, but you can applaud. Uh, so good, good. We are gradually gathering back. We will win through. Uh, and uh, it's great. I, I just think we wanted to make a, a reference to Father's Day. Uh, and I, what I want to do actually is uh, I want to get everyone uh, who is a father or a dad or a grandfather or a spiritual father to stand in here. Uh, so if you could do that. Uh, and at home, maybe, I don't know if you're sitting in your PJs or whatever with your morning coffee, but maybe you could stand as well. Uh, and uh, this is a significant moment in a nation that uh, would describe it itself as having father deserts where uh, actually I think more, more teenagers have got a mobile phone than a father at home in our nation. That, that the realities of the stats are shocking and the impact is real and the, the beauty of uh, fatherhood and spiritual fathering and grandfathering and the beauty of family is so important. So uh, I'm just going to pray and maybe if we're not standing we can reach out and just pray. Can we do that? Maybe stand where, where you are. Maybe you just want to put a hand on your heart and I think there's something to receive as we do this together. So may you receive the grace of God. May you know what it is to be a representation of Father God to those around you. May you know an empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be the best father you can be. May you receive a fresh impartation of a revelation of the Father and spread that goodness wherever you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, why don't we applaud these guys for their fathering? And I'm sure you can grab, you can grab a seat. I've embarrassed you long enough. Um, also, just to say, may, maybe for some of us that Father's Day is a tough day. It may be that it brings back issues and memories and much your experience of fatherhood has not been particularly uh, a positive one. I want you to hear that the gospel is good news and ultimately it's of a father who goes after his children. Uh, and uh, I believe today there's an impartation or, or a, an expectation to receive a fresh revelation of what it is to know God as father. And it may be uh, whether you're at home or in here that you don't know God, you don't know Jesus. And the truth of the gospel is that it, it's about a running father, a father uh, who runs after us to bring us home. That's what the gospel is. It's not Jesus came to rub it in and bring us to religious kind of behavior, but rather to bring us uh, into a family. Who knows that's good news? Yes. Uh, should we give a good news applause? Who knows that's good news? Yes. Yeah. So let's... Let's stand together. Let's stand together, all of us. And again, if where, where we are at home, you can stand or whatever. I know it's harder at home sometimes to engage across a screen and across this media, but we're believing for a God who's omnipresent and by his spirit uh, is with us. So uh, kids, it's good, good to you. If you're in the room, kids, you've already gathered online, some of you, some of the kids are already uh, in the kids' work as well. So we're truly family. So let's Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment that we have. We pray uh, for a moment of encounter with you. As Chris and the band lead us, we thank you for the gift of worship leaders, not to perform, but to lead us into the very presence of God. And so we want nothing less than to be in your presence. We pray, Lord, open our eyes to who you are. Open our hearts to who you are afresh. Come amongst us, fire of God, by your spirit, we pray. Heal us, deliver us, Lord, we pray. Come and bring your peace upon us, Lord. And as we glorify you, Lord, that something of you would just a deposit would just be left with us, that we would go from this place strengthened and built up and with a greater revelation of who you are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord. I know we can't sing out in here, but we can sing in our hearts. At home, you can sing as loud as you want. So let's anticipate God with us. Amen. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice. Your people cry out Lord of all the earth will shout your name, shout your name Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise Yahweh, Yahweh, 
We love to shout your name, oh Lord. Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. At your name, the morning breaks in glory. At your name, creation sings your story. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord, Lord of all the earth. Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord, there is no one like you, there is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. No one like our God, we will sing, we will sing, there is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you, Jesus is our God, we will sing, yes we will, Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. We love to shout your name yeah if we can't do it in here because the Lord says so we can do it in our hearts because he's the Lord of our hearts he's the Lord of all and so we shout inwardly that you are Lord and King and we bless you Jesus we thank you for who you are yeah let's applaud him yeah let's make some noise he's worthy of it faith arise in spite of what I see Lord I believe help my unbelief I choose to trust you no matter what I feel let faith arise let faith arise Champion's not dead, he is alive, yes, Lord. And he already knows my every need. Surely he will come and rescue me. God of miracles, come. We need your supernatural love. You're the God of miracles oh, God of miracles come We need your supernatural love To break through Nothing's impossible You're the God of miracles Come, I lift my eyes for 
the battle has been won, my God is faithful. And every single word he says is true. We're going to sing that again. Let faith arise and see the kingdom come. I lift my eyes for the battle has been won. My God is faithful and every single word he says is true. Oh God of miracles come. We need your super natural love to break through nothing's impossible you're the god of miracles oh god of miracles come we need your super natural love to break through nothing's impossible you're the God of miracles. Oh, this world is shaking, but I cannot be shaken. My heart is breaking, but I'm not broken. Your love is fearless. Help me to be courageous too. Cause nothing's impossible with you. This world is shaking, but I cannot be shaken. My heart is breaking, but I'm not broken. And my love is fearless. Help me to be courageous too. Cause nothing's impossible with you. God of miracles come. We need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. Supernatural love, nothing is impossible. We declare it today that nothing is impossible. Father's heart that's for me, a never-ending story 
of love that's always chasing me His kindness overwhelming and hope for me unending He's never given up on me Let me sing that again A father's heart that's for me A never ending story of love that's always chasing me His kindness overwhelming and hope for me unending He's never given up on me I will sing of how you done I remember how far you carried me from the beginning until the end You are faithful, you're faithful to the end There wasn't a day And there wasn't a day That you weren't by my side There wasn't a day That you let me fall And all of my life Your love has been true and all of my life I will worship you Then there wasn't a day That you were by my side There wasn't a day That you let me fall And all of my life Your love has been true And all of my life I will worship you I will worship you I will worship you We worship you now, Lord Oh, we praise your name I will sing of all you've done I remember how far you carried me from beginning until the end You are faithful, faithful to the end Faithful to the end You're faithful to the end We 
want to see our kingdom here Spirit break out Break our walls down Yeah Spirit break out Heaven come Just as the band keep playing, I, I feel like the Lord would say to us that when we sing songs like Spirit Break Out, we're not talking about a sideshow. We're not talking about a God who can be put in our pocket and limited to our limited understanding. We're, we're praying. This is a dangerous song, right? <laughs> this, is a, this is a dangerous song. Spirit Break Out. Spirit Break Out. Come on, at home, where we are, just think of what we're singing and we're praying for the very presence of God, the one who vibrated over the formlessness of the, of the creation and was involved in bringing something out of nothing. The same God, the same Spirit who opened your eyes to Jesus, who opened your eyes to the Saviour, who revealed Jesus to you is the one we're singing about. Spirit break out. He's the one who can make a way. He's the one who can bring a way through. He's the, he's the spirit of Pentecost. The one who birthed a transformational reality in the church that took the gospel to the ends of the world. That's the same one that we're singing about today. That we're singing spirit break out, healing, deliverance freedom, provision, redemption, restored relationships. He can vibrate over the things that look broken and hopeless and bring life. And so we say, Lord, here in this building, where we are at home or wherever we're watching this, we say, Spirit, break out. It's a dangerous prayer. We say, let the fire of God fall on us believe his renewing mindsets today showing us again that which we thought was impossible is possible that the promises in Christ are yes and amen spirit break out why don't we just sing this this again this spirit break out part of this song and pray it with faith sing it with faith sing it with expectation 
He's not limited to church meetings. <laughs> We're talking about spirit break out wherever we are, in our neighborhoods, in our streets, in our estates, in the nations. God has promised. So let's sing this again. Let's sing this again in our hearts, at home, out loud. Come, let's sing it again. Spirit break out. Break out walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come. Lord, we honor your empowering presence. We love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, you strengthen us, that you bring revelation, that you draw us in, that you're like a mighty wave and a gentle dove all at once. sensitivity. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Hard to move us on as God is just present. I don't know what it's like at home for you guys, but God is wonderfully resting on us. And um, you you are heading to your session now, so you can head off out those doors there. So bless you for being with us. Enjoy your time. Uh, thank you, Charlie and the team for leading those guys. Um, well, there's claps everywhere. It's nice. It's, everyone gets a clap. Um, you can just clap. That's fine. Um, 
Just to say, we, we are now about to, to take our offering. The way it used to be done, we used to, do you remember that thing called the bucket would come past? Remember that? Uh, well, what, it, what happens now is many of us are giving by a standing order and online. Some of you guys might not be doing that. You're welcome to give in this moment if you'd like to, but there's no pressure. Uh, but it's also good to reflect on God's generosity to us as individuals and also to us as a church. It's a privilege this week. Uh, Mornay was kind of taking the lead with this, but uh, individuals in the church, aside from the amazing offering we've had for the building, which was staggering, and the general offerings, which are generous. On top of that, uh, some guys said, look, we want to help you get get more equipment for the uh, cameras and the the, the PA stuff, and we're working out how to spend 14 plus thousand pound this week. Uh, It's been going on a little bit longer than that, uh, but uh, a project that's just about got the sign off, and we're heading for that. So gradually, you'll know we're adding to this and trying trying to build it up, and also be responsible to how God is speaking about how we keep getting kind of the message of of, uh, of God out and the beautiful message of the gospel out there. So that's, that's great. So as we give in this moment, let's just uh, reflect on his generosity. Um, I haven't got long to do this, and it's really unusual that we do this, but we felt it was wholly appropriate. And uh, Jamie and Ella Witcher, uh, who were sitting unsurprisingly on the back row, slightly hidden away, and uh, uh, have been in the church for literally decades. In fact, uh, Ella told me that she's been in this church since she was 16 years old. Uh, and uh, we felt that we couldn't let this moment go without uh, taking a, a moment to... to uh, uh, to honour them. So I'm going to really embarrass you. I wonder if you can stand, uh, you, Jamie Nella. Uh, we might even be able to move the camera for you guys at home. But I, I'm really going to, I'm going to enjoy this because uh, Jamie, over the years, we've had many jokes about who could arm wrestle who and who would win. Uh, this is my moment, Jamie. Uh, Jamie uh, and Ella, we honour you. We, we thank you for your faithfulness in this church. We know you're going off to Falling Bridge to be with family and moving house, wanting to be local to their church there, uh, which is great. So they get involved uh, in another the church there, a uh, commission church there, which is great. And uh, so we just want to honor you. Uh, Jamie, you've got me out of more practical scrapes than I care to admit. Uh, and thank you for lifting on your own pretty much that railway sleeper that was on my front garden that I was thinking, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. And then Jamie Witcher turns up. In fact, the first time I met Jamie, he was getting helping me get my car wired for some bike uh, bike carrier that, I, that we just moved to the area and didn't know how to get it done. Jamie, Jamie was there. And many of us will know that that's what this car couple alike. They're, they're faithful. Uh, they're, they're, they've been so so faithful in this church, practically helping. Uh, and we just want to say we love you. I can't believe I'm letting you go, but I have to. Uh, and I think many of us feel like that in this church. So uh, we've got a little gift here for you, actually, in a completely COVID secure, safe way. Uh, we're going to hand that to you. And just can we just applaud and at home as well. Can we honor you guys? I still recommend that you get your tires done by Jamie. It's the best in the area. Uh, So, um, yeah. Uh, One other thing to say is that um, as things are are, are progressing and changing, we're trying to move with that. Obviously, we we are hoped uh, within a few weeks we would be literally next week would have been masks off and kind of singing. That's been elongated. We know that. uh, And we're working with that. But one of the things we are doing is we are continuing to stream. We we will continue to do that, actually. That's one of the things that we are out of this going to continue to do. That is why we are investing in more equipment to be able to do that. Uh, That will be across conferences as well, as well as Sundays for sure, and other things like we've seen even in lockdown like Rise. Uh, But we are going to move just onto the platform of YouTube. And the reason for that is we uh, it's a slightly different way of interacting in that way. So it won't be hosted in that way, and there won't be prayer rooms but there will be opportunity where people who are and can engage uh, with that. They can comment. They can, all of that stuff can happen, but it's just a slightly different way of interacting uh, over that uh, platform. So it's going to be there streamed, and it will be there as a catch-up as well. All of that stuff will happen, uh, but the church online one uh, will, will come to an end, and as I say, we'll move over to YouTube. So 
I want to get Mornay on his feet. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, so I'm not really going to even introduce you, Mornay. I'm just going to say, come on, Mornay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, good morning, Godfirst um, crazies. And uh, whether you are in the building or whether you are uh, online, it's so good to be with you. We're carrying on with our uh, Radical Disciple series. And this thing is wobbly. Anyway, so I'm kind of just been reflecting on the worship this morning, and the title I wrote, which sounds grand, but I think it's, I feel provoked by it, it says, obedience is the heart of the radical disciple. Obedience is the heart of the radical disciple. And so I have this like contention, this even just as I'm thinking about how we've been worshiping this morning, things like God of miracles... You know, that prayer, that song, God of miracles, come and do your thing. You know, heaven come down and crazy, crazy stuff happening. Well, I'm going to contend with you that most of that stuff happens through obedient, radical disciples. There's moments when the Holy Spirit's going to come into this space or, you know, at work. And it's like, heaven come down, come Lord, shake us. And the Lord's going to say, all right. Uh, Malcolm, at school, that teacher that you're working with, go tell her that Jesus loves you. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Because that requires a moment of obedience, right? Or it's like, you know, you're walking down Tesco at the till, and you're like paying for your food, and you're talking to the teller, and you're like having a conversation, because that's what Christians do. You try to be friendly and open and kind of, extending the kingdom of God, and the person is like, yeah, I've got a bit of a headache today. It's like, heaven, come down, God of miracles, come, come, come. You know? And it's like, all right, come on, I've got a headache. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to offer to pray for her, because it requires a moment of obedience. Do you see? At the heart of the radical disciple, I think is Obedience. With all sorts of ways. You see, I, I, have, I don't know if you know this, but um, when our kids were young, like babies, like, you know, when they're born a few weeks old, and it's like, coochie, coochie, coo, they like, you know, you love them, and you cuddle them, and you've got affection towards them, and they can do nothing wrong, right? Yes? And of course, it's frustrating, you know, when you have to wake up three or four times in the during the night, because baby isn't sleeping, which our kids did, and it's like frustrating or so on, and, and when you're sitting at the high chair, and you're feeding them, and there's food all over the thing, and it's falling on the floor, you are comfortable with that, you might be a bit frustrated, and you might like, you know, think it's messy, and then I remember one day, it was the same thing, we had that kind of moment where we were feeding our kids, and on the high chair in the kitchen, and you know, Ethan is like food everywhere. And then this one day, it's like something changed in his eyes. It was like something possessed him, I think, where it wasn't just like food dropped on the floor. It was like this moment when he looked at me and he said, Do you know what the rules that you set? I don't like those rules anymore. Let me, let me take the food and on purpose drop it on the floor. Yes? You got that? Those parents, were, you know the deal. And what's happened is, in that moment, the, a war had begun. A new, I remember it clearly. It was like this constant, like, where you, you love your child, you give affection to them, you are patient with them, you, you also, and then suddenly it's like, oh, hang on a minute. We have a monster in the house. Because... They have grown into this human being that's got, I got a will as well. I'm starting to set my own boundaries. And I don't like the boundaries that my parents are setting. And you have a clash of wills that started. And you know what? And it's like, it's like the Garden of Eden story is replaying itself in the kitchen with my child and the high chair, parent and child, having a battle of wills together. You see, what happens is, I think, 
in the heart of a believer is that there is, and every person, there's a will in us that wants to set our own boundaries and our own kind of stuff. And then there is a clash that happens when God, whenever God talks to you about anything, when it comes to a sense of obedience, it's like what happens at that moment is, do I submit my will to God, or do I stand and kind of hold my ground in a sense? I don't want to do that. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about with you today. It's like at the heart of the believer, I think, should be this heart of the radical disciple should be the thing of obedience. Now, listen, as a, as a believer, I struggle to kind of maintain the rules. I really do. I struggle. I want to bend the rules all the time. You know, at school, you normally go to, to school five days a week. I chose four days a week was my, my schooling. I was like, why? I could do it in four days. Why should I do it in five days? Even now in this COVID world, you talk to my, the staff team, they know that Mornay is always constantly trying to bend the rules. Okay, I am. I'm just being honest. Even, like, you guys have no idea how hard it is to get that mask on. I tell you, I want to rip that thing off. But no, the thing is, there's, there's a moment where my will wants to go and say, I don't want to obey. And then there's a choice that you have to make. And so when I talk about today in the story of Ananias, there's this incredible moment when God speaks to him, and I think God's going to speak to you and I today, he says this, he says this to him, Ananias. And Ananias' response is this, here I am, Lord. And, and I feel like for each one of us, it's like a, there's a call on each person in this room and online. It's like, I feel the Lord today is like saying, hey, Mornay, and my response should be, here I am, Lord. Or, yes, Lord. And whatever he says after that is almost irrelevant. See, if we want to see kingdom breakthrough in our world, when he says, hey, Brenda, and you say, yes, Lord, at that point, it's like, game on. You know, I've spoken to people yeah, where it's like the Lord's had those moments where he says, hey, whatever your name is, and your response was, yes, Lord. Sometimes it's cost them money. Sometimes it's cost them time. Sometimes it's cost them their reputation. Sometimes, but you know what? What comes out of that is kingdom breakthrough. See, if we want kingdom breakthrough in our world, if we want to see heaven come down and all of that stuff, I think it requires disciples who have this attitude that says, Hey, Mornay, yes, Lord. Hey, Mornay, here I am, Lord. And so I want to challenge you even right now that do you have that attitude when the Lord speaks? It's like, yes, Lord. That's obedience at the heart of the radical disciple, whatever happens after that. So let's look at a story, uh, which I love this story. In, this is not Ananias. If you think of Ananias and Sapphira, do you remember that story where they lied to the, the apostles? It's not that story. This is another story, uh, which I love the story, and um, I've always wanted to speak from it. But, so let me talk about this, and I'm going to focus for a minute, just so you guys know. It's like when we talk about, about obedience being at the heart of the disciple, there are occasions, and many occasions, when we are talking about sort of moral things, right? It's like, hey, Am I going to carry on watching pornography? Am I going to commit adultery? Am I going to keep lying? Am I going to keep stealing from things? And it's like that thing where the Lord speaks and says, Hey, Mune, stop always lying. Yes, Lord. So there's like a moral thing, okay? That that's sometimes it's, part, it's definitely part of the kingdom of God. But today, primarily, we're going to focus on that thing when God says, Do this, and as a result of what you're doing, submitting to the Lord, there's this unbelievable possibilities that, that are present when believers are obedient to the voice of God. Unbelievable possibilities. I mean, unbelievable things. I mean, you know, charities can be created by that. Slavery, can you imagine Wilberforce? Hey, Wilberforce, this uh, slavery thing needs to be sorted. Like, nah. Or was it, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Suddenly, a whole world changes. Because one Christian said, yes, Lord, or here I am. Okay? So, 
Let's go. So if you've got your Bibles, you're in Acts chapter 9. Like I said, oh, I wish I had loads of time for this, but it's such a cool story. Um, Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 10. And I'm going to read and talk as we go through this, through this section, okay? So have a listen. And it says the first one. Verse 10 says this. Now, there was a disciple, which we would define as someone who's learning to think and live like Jesus, at Damascus, and his name was Ananias. Now, he's sitting in Damascus. He has no idea what's happened maybe just a few days before. Maybe a couple of weeks, possibly. Paul was in Jerusalem, and he is hating these Christians. I mean, literally, he despises them. He's at the stoning of Stephen. And he's like, these pesky Christians, they kind of declare that Jesus, who is supposed to be the Messiah, who is supposed to be the one who was supposed to come and conquer the Romans and all that kind of stuff, they say that he is God that died on the cross and now is alive again. And he hates them. I mean, it literally causes chaos in Jerusalem. This persecution is breaking out, all sorts of stuff. He gets authority, and he says, right, what I'm doing is I'm going, Jerusalem is chaos, next is Damascus. So he's like on his way to Damascus, and you guys know the story. The very Lord Jesus, he kind of meets him. And I, and I wrote this down um, in my kind of sort of creative thinking. When Jesus meets Paul on the road to Damascus, is this. Fear, screams, shock, tears, confusion, blindness. Can you imagine? It's like, I'm going to kill these Christians. The next minute, the resurrected Jesus meets Paul on the road to Damascus. Absolute chaos. In the meantime, what's happening? Ananias is in Damascus. He has got no idea what's happening. He's like, he knows about Jerusalem. He knows that there's persecution. And he's got no idea at this point that this persecutor is actually in Damascus already. Somehow, Paul finds himself in Damascus as well, in someone's house, blinded, fearful, traumatized about what has happened to him. And then God speaks to him. It's like this anti-Christian is about to have a collision with his Christian. This is what it says next. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, his response, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Three things comes up to mind quickly. The Lord is always at work, church. You know, if you think about this moment here, it's like Ananias has no idea that just maybe a few days before, Jesus met Paul on the road to Damascus. Just even in that same vicinity, he's got no idea that Jesus himself is meeting Peter in Joppa and giving him a vision as well about going to Cornelius. And this, what's happened is, sometimes I think what happens is, and here, this very persecutor is actually in their own town. It's a bit like, think about this, it's a bit like having an epic serial killer that's from London somewhere and actually is in Christchurch now in the town. Somewhere. Nobody knows. And Ananias doesn't know anything was happening. And it's like, sometimes I think when God speaks to us, I wonder whether we should just re be reminded that, listen, God is orchestrating things all the time. In this passage, the word Lord is used like five times, which shows me that God is like, he's the one doing all sorts of things, meeting Paul on the road to Damascus, meeting Peter with a vision, giving Ananias a vision here, and he's kind of doing all of this stuff. So when the Lord calls your name, and he says, hey, Leon, and your response is, here I am, Lord, just maybe God knows what's going on. Maybe we could trust him, because what he's going to say to you next it's part of a plan. It's part of something that the Lord is busy doing in this world. Right? Number one, the second observation I have about this section where it says, you know, in this, here I am, Lord. You know, when I whisper it, I don't know if it reminds you of another story. Hey, Ananias. Here I 
here I am. Does it remind you of another story? Hey, Ananias. It reminds me of Eli and Samuel. Do you remember that? It's like in the middle of the night. You remember that? Samuel is like, what is that? I don't recognize that voice. And three times he goes to Eli. Yeah? One voice. One moment. Hey, Ananias. Yes, Lord. You see, I think what happens is for radical disciples who have this sort of obedience at the heart of their lives, is that they like attuning themselves to the, to the word of God, to the voice of God. It's like there's a leaning in that says, you know what? I want to hear you and I want to obey what you say. I mean, I honestly think there's a revelation, but yeah. If you struggle to hear the Lord, I'm, you can go test this. If you struggle to hear the Lord in your life, Consider how obedient your heart is in general. Like, do you have a heart that has this, like, the Lord speaks, I say yes. And the Lord's almost like he's so ready to speak to you because, you know what, my attitude is, yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord. That kind of attitude that says, whatever you say, I'm going to do. I'm not saying it's easy, man. I mean, it's, like I said, it's going to cost you sometimes. But the Lord is like saying, hey, do you want to, are you, are you ready? So anyway, I've got some observations on that, which maybe you can guys go and, and think about, about that. There's another one. So I wrote this. When it comes to advancing the kingdom through obedient believers, we must continue to grow in recognizing his voice. And when I speak to some of you guys in your stories, I often think to myself, how on earth did you even hear the Lord there? Because I'm just like, amazed. Like, how did you hear that? And then you went for it. And then, like, something changed. I'm just like, wow. Like, leaning in and uh, positioning ourselves to hear the Lord. I want to encourage us, us as a church to do that. Here's another um, incredible observation. I, I think it's amazing. It says this. It reminds me of another story in the Old Testament. It says this. Abraham. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. <laughs> what comes after here I am? Yes, Lord. Well, take your son, your long-awaited son, and go and sacrifice him. It's like, what? It's like, what are you saying? But here I am. No matter the cost after that. It's like, here I am, Lord. It's super challenging for me. Every time the Lord speaks, listen, I think this is something I, we need to talk about. Every time the Lord speaks, it creates the opportunity to either obey or to disobey him. And I'm not talking about like moral stuff here. I'm talking about kingdom breakthrough stuff here. So I mean, like, think about this. It is very unlikely that you're going to walk down the street and see somebody that, I don't know, might need some sort of prayer. And it's going to be very unlikely that you walk past and, you say, and the Lord's going to say to you, hey, Monet, ignore that guy. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, it's very unlikely that you're going to walk or do anything at your work at the Lord's, and you're going to say, this person is, oh, right, so you're going where? You're going to a psychic healer uh, on Saturday morning. Oh, okay. And it's very unlikely that the Lord's going to say to you, hey, don't worry about it. Just say nothing to them. It's Okay. It's probably going to be the case where the Lord's going to say, hey, are you going to like, share the gospel with them? Are you going to step out of your comfort zone and go and offer to heal or pray for healing for that person? Are you going to you know, maybe um, dip into your, your wallet and buy food for that person? Or what? All, all kinds of opportunities. Listen, when you and I desire, this is like, scary for me, okay, so this isn't. When you and I desire to hear the Lord speak to us, I guarantee us it's going to create tension in you and me every time. Because why? When the Lord speaks, my will and his will are clashing. Because sometimes I have fear. Like, I don't want to talk to that person. I don't know if anything's going to happen if I do that. I don't, there's all sorts of things that are going on in my brain. It's like my will is working very hard to resist what the Lord is saying. Do you, understand? Do you guys get it? But 
If I get over myself and I do what Ananias does, yes, Lord. Like, here I am. Suddenly, all sorts of chaos breaks out. All sorts of opportunities come in the kingdom of God as a result of this. Okay, let's read it quickly. Oh, I'm running out of time. Oh, I could be all day. All right. Um, sorry, I know you don't want me to be here all day, but I'm just saying I could be here all day. Um, it says, that's what Ananias says. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. Note, he's stressing out. That's why he's praying. He's blind, and he just met the Lord Jesus on the road. You know, the poor guy's traumatized. And he has seen in a vision, which I also find fascinating, that a new Christian sees a vision already. Hey, listen, you don't have to be this mature person that's kind of like only the, the mature guys. I don't know about you. I'm praying to see visions and hear the Lord all more, more, more. Anyway. And, a man named, and, and he had seen a vision of a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, which is fair. Uh, listen to him. Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to, bl- to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he will suffer for the sake of my name. Listen, every time the Lord speaks, it creates a junction moment for you, whether you obey him or don't obey him whether we talk about moral obedience to God or adventure obedience, which I'm calling it, to to God, both confront the fundamental challenge to surrender our wills to God. Right? Both of us do that. And so um, I just find it just incredible. I want to challenge us just as as we go here. Just a couple of comments while I then want to pray for us. See, your obedience to the Lord does not require understanding. Your obedience to the Lord does not require an understanding from my side, like from me. I don't need to understand the whole situation before I actually obey the Lord. You see this in many, many situations. You see this in Abraham. Go to this land. I don't what land, where I'm going. Uh, uh, you go and sacrifice Isaac. Uh, what? What? I, here I am. Noah, build his boat. Well, we, no, we has, it has never rained. You, know, you build a boat. Five years. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. Ten years. Yeah, but I'm building, but where's the water? And people are laughing at me. Fifty years. No, no, you keep going. I don't understand. Eighty years. Up to 90 to 1900 years, he had to build that boat. Think about that, those steps of ongoing obedience to the Lord for a hundred years before he understood anything. You don't need to understand before we obey. Why? Because the Lord's orchestrating things. Obedience requires a high view of who your God is. Like, if you don't obey, it means that maybe your your will and my own godliness, when I say godliness, I mean the lower G, G, meaning an unhealthy godliness. I'm meaning like my God need to rule myself. That's what I mean. It's bigger than God's, God's will. And I'm not willing to submit to that. But listen, when we do submit it, what happens with Ananias? Listen, this is like incredible. He has the opportunity to be brought into the story of God. Listen, here he goes, and he prays for Paul. The most, probably the person that shaped the church more than anybody else after Jesus. Suddenly, he gets caught up into the story, the kingdom story of God. Why? Because he was willing to submit his will to the Lord. Like, who knows what God can do to, through you and me when we, at the heart of who we are, we set obedience at the foundation of our walk with the Lord. I want to encourage us for that, church. Like, big things, and I was thinking about it, there is no big obedience or small obedience, they're just obedience. 
There's disobedience. No matter how big or small the consequences are or the, the implications are, the moment of obedience is the same. I submit my will to the Lord. Why? Either for my joy, for the glory of God, or for the blessing of others. Just listen. Your motivation for obedience is either for the joy of yourself, which means that's not a bad thing always, because you know what? I choose not to lie all the time. That's going to bring joy to you. It's going to glorify God, and it's going to bring blessing to others. Always. Amen? Right, so let me ask you a question. Um, I'm going to have to release the parents, actually. So parents, um, if you, welcome team. Could you guys just like open the doors? And then parents, could you just go, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this. This is going to be disrupting, but it doesn't matter. Could you guys um, just go and fetch your kids? So you go through the doors here and then up, the, up there. But I really want to finish with this sort of prophetic moment here. While I've been speaking, I think there are people in the room here who know that there are certain things that the Lord's calling you to when it comes to obedience. There's certain, there's some of us here that are thinking, you know what, there are some things that I'm doing in a habit that I know is wrong. Like, I'm talking about moral, sort of like within the kingdom of God. It's like, I'm doing that thing all the time, and I feel the Lord's speaking to me about it, and something is happening that I'm choosing not to carry on doing with that, or carrying on doing that. And I feel the Lord's like saying to you today, listen, I'm calling you back to a sense of obedience for your own joy, for my glory, and for the blessing of others. I don't know what those things are, but I feel the Lord's like saying, come on. Not in that sort of a hectic way, it's for your joy, right? It's like calling you into this what it means to walk in the kingdom of God, not to violate the purity and holiness of God. It's like a, supposed to be a beautiful thing. And then I think there's others in this room that I feel like the Lord's been talking to you about certain things where you feel like, man, that feels like a brave thing to do. But I'm like, it's like a scary thing to do. Like, you know, I don't want to step out and do that. Or, you know, whatever it might be. But there's something that you do that says, I will submit myself to the will of God in order to go and pursue something that will have kingdom breakthrough. Yeah? And I would love to pray with you for both of those categories today. So this is a brave thing online. I don't know, you can maybe indicate that on the, on the chat. So, but, so don't leave me hanging here, but if there's anybody here that feels like, you know what, I'm falling into one of those two categories today where I feel the Lord speaking to me. Why don't you just lift your hand quickly? I'll just pray for you from, the, from here. So lift it nice and high so I can see, I can see some hands up. Okay, that's good. So keep your hands up. Maybe for those of you who have lifted your hands, maybe just if you're happy, just lift your hands in front of you now, almost like as a receiving moment. So Father, thank you for your word today. Lord, I thank you, God, that this is such an incredible thing that you're calling us. This is what your son does. Your son himself, he says, he says, in the garden, not my will be done, but your will be done. This is the model that Jesus gives us. Kingdom breakthrough comes because even Jesus himself says, not my will, but your will be done. And suddenly, you and I sit here because of that moment. So Lord, right now I pray for courage to come. Father, I pray right now for a sense of where we're surrendering ourselves to the will of God in our lives, Father. And Lord, I pray this is not a heavy thing, God, but I pray, give us this courage. Give us those moments, Father. Give us those, that insight, Lord God, where we say, here I am. Here I am. Yes, Lord. And Father, that we would walk with you in that journey after that, Father. I pray for that. Pray for that for us as a church, God. We will do uh, daily moments of obedience. Yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I pray for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, we ask for it. Come, Lord. Come, Father. We do ask God. Kingdom, kingdom break out. God of miracles, come through your people. Give us new boldness. Give us new courage. Increase faith in us. 
But Lord, help us to lean in to say, yes, Lord. Whatever may come, I ask for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, what do you want to do? Worship. Band, could you come up here, band? Where are you guys? Quick. So, uh, great. Um, let's stand together, guys. Let's, let's, let's stand together. I, I'm really desperate for you not to feel like heavy laden in any sense in this moment, right? There's supposed to be like a, <gasps> what could happen if I do this kind of, kind of idea. That's what it's supposed to provoke in us today. Amen? The church that's vibrant in their obedience to the Lord. Amen. So, right. So, Chris, are you? Chris needs a couple of minutes. I'm not going to keep talking, Chris. <laughs> Chris, will you stall in time, stall time, please. <laughs> I could sing for you if you want. Great, you all right? Bless you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just keeping that... Uh obedient place that Mornay's encouraged us to get into. We're just going to sing a song that just proclaims how brilliant God is. So let it be a, a foundation in you to, uh, to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Lord, I pray you give us courage this morning to be obedient.
been fed really a challenge this morning. Anyone else feel like they've met with God? Yeah, it's, we, God's so good, isn't he? So, so this week you get to go on an adventure with the Lord, being rivers of his goodness, and all you have to do is hear what he says and then say, here I am, Lord. That's so easy, right? So looking forward to hearing the stories. Uh, God bless you. We, we're going to uh, need to get out of here into the car park. In the car park, obviously, we can hang around. You can pray for one another. There's new faces around. Be friendly. Always good to be friendly. And you guys at home, thanks for joining us. Uh, and see you, see you next week. Look forward to hearing all the stories of what God's doing through us. So if we could vacate this building as quick as we can because of uh, all the regulations and whatever, that would be great. Bless you guys.